Sure, Jim. Thanks a lot for having me back. Um, you know, when I look at information sharing across the community, I, I sometimes feel like I'm a heretic because I actually think the information sharing is pretty good. I think we've made a lot of strides over the last, basically since 9-11, uh, that have really driven the community in a very positive way in this way. And so I sometimes look around, I ask people, say, well, how many cases have you cited, seen cited lately where information sharing was cited as being a real problem in that particular issue? I don't know that's the case. Also, you, you, you ask people, well, so what are the specific problems you're trying to solve? And you get some blank stares. Sure. Sure. So I think this is an issue where I think we're really on top of things. But let me run down a list here real quickly of some things that we've done in DHS that we think are really important and have helped, at least in this case. One, uh, we've, we've sent out in an unclassified world something we call the state and local Homeland Security Intelligence uh, Community of Interest. It allows us to work with people and share information with people in the fusion centers. It's been very successful for us. We've established a single point of entry where, where the state and local people and tribal can come back into us and ask questions, and we can provide that. That's up and operating. Rob Regal will talk more in detail. We've deployed our secret networks out to state and local to the fusion centers. We brought more and more people into the secret domain, uh, classified domain, to allow them to see stuff, particularly information that resides at the National Counterterrorism Center that can be helpful to them. Uh, we've worked very hard in clearing people that are able to do that. We've established the Interagency Threat Assessment Coordination Group. Uh, this is a uh, group where we bring in state and local and tribal people into NCTC, into this group, let them see all the information that we see in the federal government, and then allow them to advise us on what information should go out into the state and local environment. These are very positive things that we've done over the last year. Let me also quote that the intelligence community has established the Intelligence Community Directive 501 that you've seen probably referenced in the media. And what it basically does is sets up a system where all information in the intelligence community is supposed to be made uh, available, discoverable by all the rest of the community. Uh, we're in the process of implementing this. This basically says it's a pool system. All the community posts its information and everybody else can pull from it. Uh, this is a, a, a real step forward. Many people believe in the intelligence community, and for us in DHS, intelligence analysis, who straddle that world between intelligence and sharing with state and local, this is a big step forward for us. Uh, I think another area that we work real hard on is making the, the law enforcement and regulatory information that we have in DHS available to the intelligence community. That is, we are allowing them to see our databases and work more effectively on that. Now, let me say in all of these areas, and I think we'll probably come back to this later, there are challenges. Nothing is easy. Right. Nothing is straightforward. There's, a, there's an issue with every single one of these. And as we, I think one of the things we'll work for the next year is trying to work through those. Yeah, 